The natural world is a theatre of survival, predator against prey, a constant battle for resources. Yet humans often surpass nature in their capacity for cruelty. History is filled with chilling examples. Torture, imprisonment and systematic extermination stain our collective memory. But what happens when the pursuit of knowledge becomes a tool for inflicting fear? The early 20th century witnessed an explosion of scientific inquiry. New disciplines emerged, eager to unlock the mysteries of the human mind. Psychology, in particular, sought to unravel the complexities of human behavior. But this quest for understanding sometimes came at a dark cost, as one infamous experiment would reveal. John B. Watson, a rising star in the field of psychology, believed in a radical new approach. He rejected introspection, the dominant method of studying the mind through self-reflection. Instead, Watson championed behaviorism. This school of thought argued that observable behavior, not subjective experience, held the key to understanding the human psyche. Watson, alongside his colleague Rosalie Rayner, sought to demonstrate the power of conditioning. They believed that human emotions, even complex ones like fear, were not innate but learned responses to stimuli. To prove their theory, they devised an experiment that would shock the world and raise profound ethical questions. Their subject, an innocent infant known only as Little Albert. The year was 1920. America was on the cusp of a new era. The horrors of World War I were fading into memory, replaced by the optimism of the Roaring Twenties. Science and technology were making rapid advancements, promising a brighter future. It was in this climate of progress that Watson and Rayner began their controversial experiment. Their laboratory at Johns Hopkins University was a place of innovation and discovery. But behind the closed doors of their research facility, a disturbing experiment was about to unfold, one that would challenge the very foundations of ethical research and leave an indelible mark on the history of psychology. Watson and Rayner believed they could create fear in a human being, not just any fear, but a specific phobia, instilled through a carefully orchestrated series of stimuli. Their hypothesis was simple yet chilling. Pair a neutral stimulus with an unpleasant experience. Repeatedly and eventually, the subject would associate the two, triggering a conditioned fear response. To test their theory, they needed a subject. Someone impressionable, someone who wouldn't resist their manipulations. They found their subject in an orphanage in Baltimore, a healthy, seemingly well-adjusted nine-month-old baby boy. His name, or at least the one history would come to know him by, was Little Albert. Section 5, Little Albert, a case study. Little Albert was a cheerful, curious infant, full of life and wonder. His bright eyes and innocent smile captured the hearts of those who cared for him. He had spent his short life in the relative safety of the orphanage, cared for by nurses, but deprived of the close bonds of family. The orphanage was his entire world, a place where he felt secure, yet isolated from the warmth of a familial embrace. He was, in the eyes of Watson and Rayner, the perfect blank slate upon which to inscribe their experiment. They saw in him an opportunity to explore the depths of human behavior and conditioning. Before they began the conditioning process, they subjected little Albert to a battery of tests. These tests were designed to gauge his reactions to various stimuli and establish a baseline for his behavior. They presented him with various stimuli, a white rat which he found intriguing and harmless, a rabbit which he reached out to touch with curiosity, a monkey burning newspapers which flickered and crackled, catching his attention, a dog, and even a Santa Claus mask which he found amusing rather than frightening. Little Albert showed no signs of fear. His reactions were those of a typical unconditioned child. He was curious, even eager to interact with the strange and wonderful objects placed before him. 
His natural inquisitiveness shone through in every interaction. He was, in essence, a normal, healthy child, full of potential and ready to explore the world around him. Little did he know, his life was about to change in ways he could never have imagined. Section 6. The Conditioning Begins The experiment began with a simple pairing, the white rat and a loud, jarring noise. Watson would strike a steel bar with a hammer behind little Albert, causing the infant to startle and cry. They repeated this process several times, always pairing the appearance of the rat with the frightening clang. Slowly, little Albert's curiosity began to morph into something else. Apprehension, distress, fear. The conditioning was brutally effective. Little Albert began to associate the rat once a source of fascination with the unpleasant experience of the loud noise he would cry at the mere sight of the white rat even without the accompanying sound the experiment had worked watson and rayner had successfully induced a phobia in a healthy child section seven a legacy of fear the experiment didn't stop there watson and rayner were determined to push the boundaries of their research regardless of the consequences Watson and Rayner wanted to see if little Albert's fear would generalize to other similar stimuli. They were curious to understand the extent of the conditioned response. They introduced a rabbit, a fur coat, a dog, and even a Santa Claus mask. Each item was carefully selected to test the limits of Albert's conditioned fear. To their horror, little Albert exhibited signs of fear towards all of them. His reactions were immediate and intense showing the power of their conditioning. He had developed a generalized phobia of furry objects, a direct result of their conditioning. This phobia extended beyond the initial white rat to anything with similar textures. The full impact of the experiment on Little Albert remains unknown. The ethical implications of their work were profound, raising questions that still resonated today. Watson and Rayner, despite the ethical implications of their work, never attempted to decondition the child. They left him to deal with the consequences of their actions. Little Albert left the orphanage shortly after the experiment concluded his fate lost to history. The records of his later life are sparse and inconclusive. Some speculate that he carried the burden of his induced phobias for the rest of his life. The legacy of fear that began in that laboratory may have haunted him forever. Section 8. The Ethical Abyss The Little Albert experiment sent shockwaves through the scientific community. While some praised Watson and Rayner for their groundbreaking work in behaviorism, others were appalled by the ethical implications of their methods. The experiment raised profound questions about the limits of scientific inquiry and the responsibility researchers have towards their subjects. Today, the Little Albert experiment is widely condemned as a gross violation of ethical research standards. The experiment would never be allowed under modern ethical guidelines, which prioritize the well-being and informed consent of participants. The legacy of Little Albert serves as a chilling reminder of the potential for cruelty in the name of science. Section 9. A question for the future. The story of Little Albert is a stark reminder that the pursuit of knowledge must always be tempered by compassion and ethical considerations. This infamous experiment, conducted in the early 20th century, involved conditioning a young child to fear a white rat by pairing the sight of the rat with loud, frightening noises. The ethical implications of such an experiment are profound and troubling. It forces us to confront uncomfortable truths about the history of scientific research and the potential for harm when ethical boundaries are crossed. The debates that ensued from such experiments have shaped the ethical frameworks we adhere to today, highlighting the importance of maintaining a balance between scientific curiosity and moral responsibility. As we venture further into the uncharted territories of human consciousness and behavior, we must be ever mindful of the ethical dimensions of our work. The brain, with its myriad complexities, offers endless possibilities for discovery, but also poses significant ethical challenges. We must never forget 
the lessons learned from the mistakes of the past. Each misstep in the history of science serves as a cautionary tale, reminding us of the potential consequences of neglecting ethical considerations. The pursuit of knowledge is a noble endeavor, driven by our innate curiosity and desire to understand the world around us. However, this pursuit should be guided by a strong ethical compass. It should never come at the cost of human dignity and well-being. The well-being of participants in any scientific study must always be a priority, ensuring that their rights and dignity are upheld. The legacy of Little Albert is a call to action, urging us to reflect on our practices and strive for ethical integrity in all our endeavors. It serves as a poignant reminder of the impact our work can have on individuals and society. We must remain vigilant in our pursuit of scientific progress, constantly evaluating the ethical implications of our research. Vigilance ensures that we do not repeat the mistakes of the past and that our advancements are made responsibly. We must never allow the shadows of unethical experimentation to darken our future. By learning from history and committing to ethical practices, we can ensure that our quest for knowledge benefits humanity as a whole.